All right, well, welcome back. This is week two of Vlogmas. My name's Amber, and this series will detail different aspects of what I'm doing in preparation to move to Japan, which is happening on December 30th. So today I'm going to talk about how I shipped everything I own to Japan, uh, the entire process, how much it costs, what's going to happen once I get there and how do I get my stuff. And this company that we're looking at, Yamato Transport, is the company I went with. So this will kind of be a review of them and their services as well. So. I looked around at different options and either the affordable ones weren't offered in my area or it just wouldn't work. There was a one company called Next Ship or something like that and oh my god, stay away from them. They are a train wreck. I think if I would have used them, I would have lost everything I own. Uh, awful experience just avoid them. Uh, Yamato is a Japanese based company. I thoroughly trust them. They were super communicative in their emails. They got back to me within hours. Uh, they have a base of operations here in the United States. So they, they're on the same time zone essentially. So there's two different branches of their service that I'm using. Um, one is through their moving section of their services, and then the other is the international partial, par parcel delivery. So I'm first going to talk about the moving portion because that's how I got 90% of my stuff shipped. So if you clicked moving, it'll take you to this page and it gives you different options based on like your needs. You might be a big family. You might have tons of furniture. Uh, I only have cheap garbage furniture and I'm leaving all of it here because it's not, it doesn't mean anything to me. All I needed are my things. So I opted for this one, uh, shipping boxes via C, uh, and it's self packed. So I packed everything myself. Um, Basically, they just deliver everything to you at your door in Japan and then you take it from there. Um, so if you click this here, it details what you're going to get. So they give you the choice of um, it's either 20 small boxes or 10 large boxes and you can mix and match uh, basically one large box equates to two small boxes. So I did five large boxes, 10 small boxes. So 15 boxes total. And they kind of give you the dimensions and what could fit in here. Um, weight doesn't mean anything. I tried not to pack anything over like 50 pounds because at that point it's like a human is moving this and I don't want to do that to them. <laughs> but you better believe in these small boxes that I did fill them with books and manga and they're pretty heavy. But that's why you put those in the small boxes. <laughs> um, I, I only got the larger boxes because I do have some things like a big record player that just wouldn't fit in small boxes. But honestly, the boxes are a really good size. They're like a double thickness. So imagine a cardboard box, but like double that. Uh, they are so sturdy and thick. So they're really nice. Um, you can get a little estimate. Now, if you want Yamato to come pick your box up from your door, it's gonna cost more. They told me it would cost like $800 more. I live an hour from their main port in New Jersey. So we took everything to them and dropped it off to them and it saved us $800. So for just the sake to show, uh, of showing you how much I paid, I'm going to select that I'm shipping from New Jersey. And then <laughs> if it loads here, it's not gonna. All right. Um, let me refresh the page real quick. 
and we'll see. Okay. So we're shipping from New Jersey. Yeah, here you go. And then Fort Lee, that's where their, their port is located. And then you can select the prefecture. I think it's Aichi. It was either Aichi or Gifu I'm going to be living in. But here's Aichi. And so here are the different packages. I went with small. Um, it's a lot of boxes. Like I said, five large, 10 small. Like I didn't need anything more or less than the small. And here is the price. That's what I paid. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot, but I need my stuff. Like I'm, I'm not someone who can just ditch all their stuff and, and move across the, the world. I'm, I'm a, a, a material girl, if you know what I mean. Uh, so this was worth it. Every cent. And like I said, like the, just the service that they gave me was so great. Um, so charges include packing supplies, damage compensation up to a certain amount, etc. Uh, charges not included in package service, packing service, duties and tax. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm afraid of is the duties and taxes that I'm going to probably have to pay later. I don't know how much that's going to be yet. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Uh, so they send you... Um, all the boxes, you give them your shipping address, etc. They ship you all the boxes. They gave me like this brown paper packing tape, two rolls of it. They gave me uh, bubble wrap, uh, like an, like paper wrap to like wrap knickknacks and things in. Um, a huge packet of information talking about how to label everything, how to pack, etc. And then also there's forms you have to fill out of generally what's in each box. It's for customs. They need to know in general what's in each box and how many of it. You don't have to be exact. Like you can't, you don't need to write 10 pencils, you know? Um, so just give a general gist of what's in each box. So as you're packing these boxes, whether it's on the actual custom sheets themselves or on another piece of paper, make sure you're writing down kind of what's in each box. Um, so here they have a little flow. You're going to fill out the inquiry form. And that's this right here. Um, very basic. You're gonna, just going to fill out this information and then write in the comment generally what you're looking at. So I told them, I live here. I need this stuff shipped to here in Japan. Um, I want the small package. Can I mix and match? I want five large, 10 small. Just give them as many details as you can and they'll get back to you probably within a day or two uh, with the next steps. I will say this is super important that you cannot proceed with shipping anything with them until you have your visa for Japan. So I, I did the inquiry, I got all the information I needed, and then they basically said, all right, well, we need you to have your Japan visa before we can continue. So once I got my visa, I took a picture of that and my ID and whatnot, and I e emailed that to them. And then they're like, okay, now we can send you the boxes. And then I, I repacked everything that I already had packed and good to go. Um, they ship your boxes. It's like via UPS or FedEx or something. It gets, it got, it got to me in like three business days. It gets to you really quick. But then again, I live an hour away from their main port, which is probably why, um, picking up, I can't give any feedback on the experience of them getting the packages from me. I will say that if I did go that route, they said that they were all booked up the month I was leaving, which posed a problem. So I would have had to schedule the pickup for the next month when I wouldn't even be here. So it was just not, not worth it to me, but be prepared for that, that they may not be able to pick up your boxes exactly when you need them to. Uh, so if you can take it to one of their branch locations, 
you can find their a branch location through some part of their website. It'll, it'll show you where their branch locations are. Um, right outside New York City, basically, in, in New Jersey. I would go with that. It's going to save you so much money. Even if you're driving an hour or two, it's $800. It's just, it's, it's worth it. Um, and shipping. So I dropped off all the boxes to them in their warehouse in New Jersey. Uh, they told me, they gave me two customs forms that I had to fill out and keep. And then when I get to Japan, as I'm going through immigration, I have to have immigration stamp these forms. And then I think also when I go through security, I think I have to have them stamp the forms. And then <laughs> before I leave the airport, I have to have the Yamato kiosk, someone at the Yamato kiosk, then take the form. I think they take one and they leave me with one very confusing they they emailed me i think this is basically a, a huge guide to the the customs form and exactly what to do with the customs forms uh, they even show you exactly where the yamato counters are in each of the air major airports in japan um but i have to read over this and make sure i know exactly what to do and it even says like here if you're not able to hand over the sheet to the Yamato counter there's other options for you so if like you are just in the airport and you're overwhelmed and you just forget it's not a big deal there's other options like you can just mail it to them so you know don't worry about it uh like I said they give you a huge packet of information and it's just everything you need is in there. You just have to sit down, read it, understand what to do. But it is overwhelm well, overwhelming. Like, I'm really OCD in preparing for things. And, like, I'm <laughs> still overwhelmed even though I feel like I have a good grip on what to do. So that's it for sending those first 15 boxes to Japan. Now... There are things that I had that were too big uh, height-wise to fit in those boxes. So that's when this other service comes in. Um, so we have three more boxes. We're, we're shipping through this. Um, two boxes are like kind of like framed posters, art, canvas. And then the third one uh, will be a PC in a box. Uh, that's just way too big to ship otherwise. Um, and like I checked to see how much it would cost to ship one of these boxes through FedEx and other services. And they're just like a thousand dollars each. And I'm just like, why? Why though? So since I'm already using Yamato for the first set of boxes, it makes sense to just use them also. So this is it. The Beso. Uh, for personal items, uh, shipping rate from, which is the lowest amount, $135. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be a bit pricey, up to 55 pounds. Now, this is the, the page for more information on this Beso service. Um, it, it ships really fast. Um, because it's going through, it's, it's being shipped via plane from what I understand. So if there's any items that you don't want to wait three to four months for, which is how long it, it would take to do that other service, three to four months, uh, you can do this. It'll get there probably within a week or two. Um, the only issue is, is if you cannot take it to their port in New Jersey, um, you will have to opt to deliver your packages to a UPS location, which is really handy, honestly, because it only costs like basically $15 more for the first box and then $10 more. So it would be like $35 if we were to do this for our three boxes that we have left and then UPS delivers it to Yamato and then they ship it to Japan 
and then you can organize for a delivery. Only issue is that if you do the oversized, so if you have things that are heavier than 55 pounds or the length, width, and height exceeds uh, 63 inches, then you're going to have to do the oversized. But if you do the oversized, you can't opt for that UPS drop-off method. You would have to take it to their port location. So just keep that in mind. But like I said, this, this is super handy um, that we're going to take advantage for with uh, for our last three boxes. And then they... Basically, they told me after I land in Japan to call them and even if I'm still going to be waiting a few more weeks for my boxes to arrive, that we can orchestrate a delivery date for the boxes so I can give them my address, tell them what date I prefer. They can kind of give me inform more information as to when it'll arrive. Um, I emailed them and they said... It'll probably be in Japan end of January, which is good that because we're going to be, we're landing there December 31st. So we're going to only be without our things in Japan for a month. So, you know, not bad, but honestly, they're so helpful. I, I had to actually email them asking if I needed to submit separate customs forms for each different service I'm using. Um, and they said, no, on the customs forms, you just write in total how many boxes you're having shipped to Japan. So for me, it's the 15 plus three more. So 18. And that's how many I would write on that form. And then I would just get the form handed in the same way, basically. So that's where I'm at. Uh, you know, we have like two more weeks left before we leave for Japan and I will make like a little follow-up video with what the experience was like in organizing the delivery of everything, if there was any mishaps, um, how much the duties and fees were. So look forward to that if you seriously want to look at Yamato as an option to ship all your things because I only have positive things to say about them. <laughs> so this is probably way longer than I wanted it to be. So I will leave you there. Uh, next week for Vlogmas, I will be talking about my experience in apartment hunting in Japan and showing you a few different apartment options that I was looking at. So look forward to that. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. The Japan videos are coming <laughs> very soon. So thank you for tuning in and until next week.